The buffalo is a symbol of gratitude, abundance, joy, wellness, and healthy relationships. The power within the buffalo spirit will help you achieve happiness and prosperity in this life. However, the buffalo spirit animal requires that you respect the earth and live a harmonious, meaningful life. In honor of the buffalo, remember to live in gratitude and be grateful for the talents and gifts you've been blessed with. Ask for help when you need it. As you do so, your life will be touched with peace. Okay, so today we are going to paint this buffalo. Um, a couple of back steps. First, I traced from this reference picture onto my watercolor paper, and then I taped my paper down. Um, if you haven't seen how we trace our watercolor paper and how we tape our paper down, I'd recommend going and watching those videos before you do this one if you need help getting set up. Once you're set up, we can get started. So I want to talk about colors for a second and let's talk about mixing some colors because it's always good to start by mixing some colors before you start painting. So let's talk about colors for a second. This back here is going to be green and browns and yellows. And so we want, and then we've got some of those same reddish brownish tones in here. So we want to try to match those colors before we go too far in this. So I'm just getting some water here. Okay. Now let's get some, I see this like yellowishy tone of green, which I have a beautiful sap green right here. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of like a yellow ochre to it, just a smidge to kind of just dull it down just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more. I don't want green in my yellow, so I'm just rinsing it. There we go. See, so that's a good muted green for back here. And then we also have some like, I think I'm going to use some straight yellow ochre in some of it, but then there's also like a reddish brownish tone, almost like a burnt sienna, which I feel like we need to, let's do this burnt sienna. with a little bit of red. Might need a little bit more brown now. Maybe we'll put a little bit of actual brown in it. There we go. That's it right there. And they just kind of mix together a little bit, trying to keep them separate. That's okay. All right. So we've got some of this reddish tone. We've got, we're gonna use our yellow ochre and then we've got some of this greenish tone. So that'll be enough right now for this loose background. So our first step is we are going to paint the background. I'm going to try to avoid painting Mr. Buffalo just because watercolor is transparent. And even though he is darker than our background, sometimes it's just easier just to paint around him um, instead of trying to regroup um, and paint over him. So let's start with just getting our entire paper wet. I have a round 10 brush and we are going to just wet the whole thing. So we're gonna paint in this area between his legs and underneath of him. If you get on his legs a little, like whatever, because all of these come up, up in front of him anyways, so it's no big deal. Okay, if you can't tell where the water is, you can kind of tilt it at an angle against your light and you can see what's wet and what's dry. And again, we just wanna make sure the whole thing is wet. A good rule of thumb on how wet you want it to be is you don't want it to like move when you tip it, but you want it to like shine. Um, something that will stay wet long enough for you to actually paint on it. If it's too dry, you won't be able to finish your, your painting before it dries. So I can see that the whole thing is wet. So now we're gonna move kind of quickly. We've got this green we've already mixed together. And we're just gonna lay this in up top here. Okay. 
Okay, soft green. And then let's also add in some lines of like a soft yellow ochre. So I'm gonna kind of dilute it down just a little bit and just kind of drop in some lines here. Let it kind of just do its thing. Don't be too controlled here. Just let it do its thing. Okay, here's a tip as well. If you take a piece of your paper towel where it's like kind of pooling on the sides and just kind of put the corner in it, you'll kind of just pick up that excess that you don't want like pooling around if your paper gets too wet. So like on the sides especially is where it does it. There we go. Okay. So then now we can add touches of brown in it as well. I'm just gonna use the straight brown. And I'm just kind of, I'm noticing that the brown kind of lines where the soft yellow is. So I'm just gonna let them kind of work together, but kind of put like an, a line just underneath the yellow. Okay, and then this top corner here is much darker, so let's add some dark green. Um, I forgot to mix this color, so let's mix some real quick. I want this to be kind of like a, a dark, I'm gonna mix some, this one is Viridian, green Viridian hue with, oops, I mixed the wrong cup. And then I'm gonna mix some Payne's Gray with it, just so it's a good darker green. And we're just gonna add some contrast, just kind of in little bits and spots. So we have the soft green, but we also have var variations of the darker green as well. Okay, I think I'm gonna be happy with how that dries. So let's do the bottom while it's still wet. I think this part dried a little bit, so I'm gonna wet it up again. This is what I mean when you kinda gotta move. I probably should have done a little bit at a time, but that's okay. Okay, so the base of this one down here is like a light yellow ochre. So we've already wet it down, which is great. So now we're just gonna take some yellow ochre and we're gonna really lighten it up around here though. Kind of a little bit of paint will go a long way and we're just gonna drop it in around the buffalo. He is gonna look so good, you guys. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and add in some of these blurred ones of this red that we made. So I'm going to try to be a little bit controlled in this, even though wet on wet technique is kind of hard to control, um, but we can try our best. So I got just a little bit, I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna dab out any excess on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna come in and make some lines and we're just gonna let them do their thing. So these are some of the plants in the background. And it's kind of fun that it naturally blooms at the top like that because that's what they do. So there's some bigger ones up in the front and I'm just being kind of casual with where I put them. They're just kind of all over. Um, I have some excess pooling again here, a little too much water. Okay, so there's that and then we can maybe add little bits of green blurbs. Just that I'm noticing there's a little bit of green kind of scattered in here. Okay, the parts where, I don't want you to get too involved in this right now. We were just worried, worried about the ones that looked kind of blurred in our picture. So see how these ones back here are blurred and these ones here are blurred. Like there's just those little guys. We are just kind of making the idea that there's gonna be some blurred. When it dries, we'll come in and add the focused ones. 
Um, so we'll add some good detail with the ones that are more um, crisp in the picture. So same with the buffalo, he'll be way more crisp. This background is just kind of a fun way to get a really loose blurred look to your painting. So um, I'm already seeing that I've got a couple blooms working here, which is great um, in some cases, but I don't want them. So while they're wet, I'm just gonna kind of work them out. There's not too many going on over here. I think it'll be okay, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra green maybe on top of it to kind of cover up some of those spots. So blooms happen when you have already put paint down and it's starting to dry and then you add more water to it. And so at some point I added where it was starting to dry, I added more water and it kind of just bloomed out, which is great. If you want that look, that's fine. I just didn't, so I'm gonna work mine out a little bit now. Okay, that'll do. I think that'll be good. So we're gonna let this dry completely, and then we'll move on. Okay, so our background has dried for our buffalo, and um, I kind of like the way some of this has just kind of blurred together. Um, so now we get to come in and start making some more detailed lines in a lot of these like weeds and, and plants that we have going on here. So um, let's start with just kind of creating some of these, and I don't want to get too detailed and too caught up into this. We're just gonna make some fun plants. Okay, so let's start with getting a good dark brownish color. I'm gonna take a burnt, I always get burnt umber and burnt sienna mixed up, but good dark brown. And I'm gonna do that by mixing a little bit of Prussian blue into it. And it's going to give us this muddy, almost blackish color, which is perfect for like right here. It kind of almost looks, has a green tone to it. So I'm just going to come in and just kind of make a little bit of squiggles off the plant stem. Because that's essentially what it is, right? And it kind of comes out to the side with some squiggles coming off of that. And then there's a really good little one. So we're going to keep our brush straight up and just come out. And then there's just some little guys on the ground next to it. So that's that first one there. And then this one right next to it is kind of the same idea. It kind of comes up and it wise out. And you can do this also by diluting your colors down or adding some other colors to it and just softening up some of them. So a little bit more water and some yellow will kind of make more of these little sprigs here. And I'm just going to just do a bunch of them and then add their little dots. Don't be afraid to get right up next to these other ones. Let them overlap. Okay. 
And as the paint wears off your brush, they're just going to get a little bit lighter. So it's going to almost make it naturally look layered. And let them just kind of fade into the back. So as the, as the paint wears off the brush, that's when I'm going to start moving into the back area here because it's lighter. So I'm just not refilling my brush. I'm just going to make all these little weeds by just doing lines and dots on those lines. I'm also going to do some horizontal lines to add some depth as far as like ground. Okay, so there's a portion of it. And then I just kind of ran out of water and whatnot on my brush. So I'm just gonna come back in and just do a little bit more. Um, I've noticed kind of up here too, there's a little bit more greenish tones and some reddish tones in there too. So don't be afraid to do a little bit more colors and play with those a bit. I'm still kind of keeping them on the muted side, but there are some green and some sprigs of orange and red in here too. So that's kind of the idea. And we're just going to do that all around right here. And we'll get some good big ones over here. So for this big one, I'm going to use a variety of colors and I'm just going to keep making a bunch of lines. I'm trying to keep just use the tip of my brush, keep the brush straight upright. And just kind of let this branch out in its own little way. The best part about this is it's a big giant weed, right? It's not, <laughs> we don't have to get too particular in it. We don't have to worry if it looks all right we're just making a bunch of lines in a bunch of random directions everybody's is going to be a little bit different and that's what's going to make it beautiful so i just kind of used a darker color and now i'm going to come back over it with kind of like a muted reddish orange which i'm just going to use a little bit of red and some of this yellow ochre i have over here and then just come in at it again so that way we've kind of got this almost orangish tone to it and just kind of keep doing some lines and layers and let it do its thing. Okay. And then there's also these little dots on these ones again, cause it's not a, a clean straight weed, right? There's all sorts of prickles and things on it. So we're going to add some texture to it by just adding some dots. Okay. And while I have this soft reddish tone, I'm going to come in and add some of these red leaves and weeds and stuff back here as well. There's some underneath of the buffalo. There's a bunch over here too that I just didn't add yet. So come in and add some more color within the depth of these weeds. It's just a bunch of layers of lines and dots. <laughs> I'm also, there's on top of all of these little red guys, there's some yellow little almost um, flowery type things. So I'm just going to add some of those just around like in the front of the buffalo and around his feet and just kind of around back here. So I'm just using a straight yellow ochre and just adding some happy colors in here. 
blossoms, if you will. Okay. So now where I made some of these blossoms, I'm gonna use some more of that yellowish greenish tone that we made over here and just kind of come up off of these little blossoms. Try to make the grass connect to the top. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Doing these horizontal lines, kind of just scattered horizontal, almost dry brush, kind of just adds some sense of like ground behind all these leaves and weeds and stuff. So I'm just kind of laying this in here casually. You can hear the dry brush. So you can kind of see this starting to come together. It's just a bunch of lines and dots and just textures and we're just playing with it. So the joy of two just adding in this wet ground with the, these lines here is it, yes, it's mostly dry, but it is still a little wet. So this is gonna kind of blur out a little bit, which kind of creates these blurred ones in the front, which is kind of fun. So I'm just gonna kind of layer those in where I can. So I just mixed some more of that Prussian blue and um, that burnt sienna, burnt umber. I always forget the two. Um, and I just kind of mixed them together to make a darker color here, just to make this stand out a little bit more prominently. And we're gonna add some of the pokies to it with the little dots. And then we'll just kind of come around and add some more defining texture to some of these guys here. Just kind of like what we did over here, just to make the two sides balance a little bit. They're almost there. We're just going to add a little bit of texture here and we'll call it good. I'm going to mix in a little bit more of this yellow ochre to this color. to kind of dull it down a little bit more and get that muddy green color. There you go. Okay, call that done. Don't get too caught up into it. Don't get too crazy with it. Um, if you want, what we can do to add some fun little bits. If you want, what might be fun is to add some little, these look like cotton bits here. If you wanted to add a little bit of white highlights to some parts, you can use your judgment and decide where you want those. And add just some little, there's a couple over here too. just add a little couple of white 
highlights to some of the, the weeds in here. It might be a little fun touch if you want. I use um, a Signo, what is it called? Uniball Signo Broad is the name of this jelly pen. You could also use bleed proof white or acrylic paint, whatever you want. I'm just going to do some little dome shape weeds in here, wherever I feel like it. When this dries, we can come back in with some more detail and add like the base of the stem to these little cotton things. But we'll call that good. Okay, let's move on to our buffalo, shall we? I think that he's the highlight of this and we haven't even started on him yet. So let's move on to him. Um, I'm gonna start with making a good, beautiful, rich brown. And so I'm gonna take my brown. And I think maybe a smidge of like Payne's Gray, I think will make it really pretty. I'm gonna use this, I'm just matching browns here. I'm gonna use this brown that I've already mixed up right here on this part of the Buffalo because that's the part that matches most. And then I'll remix some other colors for the other parts of the buffalo. But I think that's where I'm gonna start with this one. It looks darker in my palette than what it does on paper, so it's good to just test it out. So I'm just gonna lay this in where I see this lighter color, and when it dries, we'll add some texture to it. And it does kinda get darker towards the bottom, so that's okay. The great thing with watercolor is it layers nicely, so just drop it in. And watercolor does dry lighter than what you put it on, so keep that in mind as well. The thing I love about this is that you can use almost a dry approach to this because he's so textured anyways that it doesn't need to be the soft, beautiful watercolor that we're used to, right? Add some texture, get a little scratchy in it, and it's okay. All right, let's mix up. I feel like this is such a rich color that adding maybe some purple to it will add that richness, but keep it brown. So, I mean, that was close. Let's add a little bit more brown. I'm just going to play with the colors, mix them a little bit. That's actually a pretty good rich color. Let's dull it down just a little bit by try some yellow in it. And some blue. Okay, so I added this brown is a mix of all colors. I kind of, I just wanted this almost dull, rich. How is it dull and rich at the same time? I don't know how to explain that, but it's it's almost got this like pinkish hue to it from the purple. That's too purple. So we're just playing with this. Color matching can be hard. Um, it can be very hard sometimes, but just keep experimenting with it and I think it will eventually pull together. So you just have to play with your colors. My colors right now are a little too red. So what cancels that out is green. So we're going to add a little bit of a sap green to it. We're intentionally making a muddy brown, um, but we just have to be a more green. I'm gonna add a more vibrant green and see what it does. Okay, 
Okay. I mean, that's a good dull muted color. I don't know if it's matching what I want it to. There we go. That might be closer. You know, and it doesn't have to match perfect, but I do think that this is pretty close to test in there. Okay. So I'm going to use this brown. And you guys, this is a smorgasbord of colors. I mixed burnt umber, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, sap green, emerald green, yellow ochre, and purple. <laughs> and so uh, there's, I don't really know if there's a way to teach how to duplicate that. I just kind of kept testing colors to get the color that I wanted. Um, but luckily with brown, there's no way to mess that up. So just, just play with it and see what you want to do. Um, the joy with this is we are going to start at a deeper dark color and then we're gonna let it fade up. So um, keep this good consistency here. And I don't want to miss his belly here. We're gonna keep it dark under his belly and it kind of lightens up right where that belly comes. We'll add some highlights to his leg in just a minute. Kind of keep the detail in the, the form that he has there. And his leg kind of comes back like this. So we're going to pay attention to the shadows and the highlights and kind of work that together. But we're going to kind of softly dilute this as we come up. So that just means adding just a little bit more water as we get further up. Careful not to make any blooms. Blooms happen when your paint is almost dry and then you come in and add more water to it. And you can do that by just kind of reworking that area. Okay, I'm not going to try to pay too much attention to this right now because this comes in layers. So don't get frustrated. Don't give up too soon. That's one thing I had to teach myself is that watercolor comes in layers and it's okay to kind of just come back to things. So I want this area right here to be much, much darker. So this is, I mean, really okay to add just a little bit of like black to it. Black goes a long way but it is much darker. So let's come in and fluff up this part right here with some black. And I'm using some texture when I lay this in here. So adding this fur in textures, like the stipple texture like this, naturally creates the texture of his fur. Um, and if you just do it in layers, then it really makes it fluffy. And so my brush is practically, I mean, there's a little bit of water on it, but it's wet enough just to basically pick up paint and then just dabble it in. So, we're going to get really dark here. We want to make sure we've got a good amount of value when we come in right here. So really, I'm, I'm going to mix some black over here, but it's pretty much going to be all black. And we're just going to dabble in this black. Now, there, his foot does come down lower, but you can't really see it because of the plants. So we're just going to kind of dabble it in there. And we'll emphasize some of those plants shortly. So 
So I'm gonna, while I have this lighter color, I'm gonna add his, his horns in here because we're gonna keep coming in around his horns with a darker color. And so while this is all in here, we're gonna let this texture dry and we'll come in here and add some more darker colors to it soon. Um, again, watercolor comes in layers, so don't get frustrated. Don't quit too soon because it looks dumb because sometimes, I know when I first started, I'm like, this looks stupid. And I would, <laughs> I would push it aside and I'd get annoyed with it. But then I learned that the first layer is not the end all be all. We're going to keep working. So um, don't get, don't get too frustrated and just keep going. So again, I'm going to, this leg here is actually very, very fluffy. So we're going to bring out some of this fluff. So you can kind of see how close his legs are together here. And then same thing back here. His leg is much wider than what it looks like here, but it's because of the plants that makes it hard to see. So I'm gonna come in and just kind of notice some of these highlights and add the darker areas. Okay, so I kind of let this layer dry just a little bit. And we're going to come in and add more value because if you were to look at this and turn it in black and white, like obviously this needs to be much, much darker. And then we're going to get into the parts where the flowers kind of cover up the hooves and his like legs and stuff a little bit more because right now he looks really goofy right here <laughs> and there's not a lot of definition and stuff in there. So we'll get to those. So we're going to add some more value in the places that it needs to be darker. And in doing so, we're gonna use pretty much straight black on these next upcoming layers. Um, so I'm gonna just get right up around his head. And I'm still using that kind of stippling motion just to kind of get some more fluff going. Okay, now something that I think is worth noting here is just the subtle like shadows underneath here. I don't wanna add a lot, but he does have shadows underneath his body that we're just gonna kind of just add in there just ever so slightly, just while our paint was a little bit lighter on our brush. And then keep going, we're gonna fluff up some black all around this horn and I'm going to add just a little bit of I'm going to use the tip of my brush and just kind of pull out some of this fur just to make it extra fluffy So his nose is almost the same dark, dark values in bits and pieces. And it kind of spots as it kind of comes around the base. So we'll add more color and more value and stuff as we get in there, but there's some good dark tones there that we can work with. 
Okay, and then through here, I just wanna casually like dot around to kind of create some darker layers. And we're gonna kind of pull away from his eye, but leave a little bit of space and then come up around. I'm just continually referencing this just to kind of see where the dark colors are, where the lighter colors are, and just splotching in some of the darker values. We'll come in with more of the browner tones. Um, what we're gonna do is just lay in some good dark spots and then we'll come in with this brownish color that we had before and kind of lay it over the top of it and it'll kind of just make him all look soft and fluffy while he has some value. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So we're coming up around his eye again. As we come up under his leg, I'm just gonna add some more fluffy looking whatever on his legs. <laughs> okay, and I know we can't see it because of the plants, but I'd imagine his like hooves kind of come down like this. I'm not gonna get too into it because we're gonna come in and add some more plants over the top of it. I just want to kind of insinuate that some of that is there. So I don't know exactly what their hooves look like because they're not shown here, but I'd imagine they're somewhat like a horse, right? Or like a cow, where they kind of come out forward. So don't get too far into this because again, we're gonna <clears throat> Add some plants around him. And come back over and layer that in. I want some good dark contrast, so I'm going to continually keep coming in with this dark, dark black right up around his chin. And just, I'm just keep speckling this in here. Okay, let's kind of let that be for a second. Let's add some more, I don't know why I rinsed that so well. <laughs> We're gonna come in and add some more um, value down here, just some dark color. And I'm gonna just try to pay attention to where there's some like highlights. there's like this white or this lighter section that just kind of comes straight down so I kind of just left this little strip here where there's some defining features in his leg I'm also going to come very, very, very lightly around this area where the lighter color meets the rest of his skin. Very, very lightly because that's going to eventually blend in and we're going to create some different shadows and stuff there. But we're just going to do that very lightly for now. And there's some darker color up along his backside here, and that will just kind of give us some shading. Okay, now here's where we rinse it, and I'm gonna dry it for the most part, and we're gonna blend this in. So there's, I don't want a whole lot of water in my brush because I don't want to lift up all the beautiful color we've kind of already laid down, but I do want it to kind of just get worked in so it's not so harsh with these black lines. They kind of blend together. 
to naturally create some dimension. Okay, this is where we're gonna blend this in. So again, slightly wet brush. I'm just gonna come back and forth really quickly along where these colors blend together and just let them kind of work together just very quickly. The idea is to not think too hard on it. Don't get too caught up in it. Just let the colors kind of work together. There we go. Okay, he's coming together though. I really like the way he's looking. Just want these to softly blend. He does have a little bit of like vertical texture to his skin if you wanted to very subtly add some like vertical lines in his skin up here you could if you want and that will kind of create more shape very very subtly I don't even have I don't even know if I have any color on my brush it's just from whatever was wet from when I blended it Here we go. Okay, so now let's take some of that good, rich brown color that we had before. Might have to mix up a little bit more. I'm not gonna mix all the colors in there this time. It's just gonna be very subtle. And we're gonna come and do a brown spotted layer through here. Don't get his uh, antlers or his horns or whatever. And we're just gonna create some more texture in this area here. And then we're gonna kind of just mix in some of this brown. This is where I said he's gonna look a little softer because we're gonna blend in some of those darker spots that we had. While we're adding the brown. So this is now where I'm going to come up around his eye because it's not all white around it. It's just we want it to leave it a little wider. Okay, I think he's coming along pretty nicely. I'm gonna just kind of blend out some of these shadows while we're waiting for the other parts to kind of settle down a little, let them dry. Okay, when he's completely dry, we're gonna come back in and add some other um, little details to him with some fine liner and stuff, but I'm gonna come in and I have a really, really dry brush and I'm going to just add these little highlights to like where his, there's like some muscles in his leg. So I'm just gonna lift that paint by using a really dry brush and just kind of rubbing out that paint by creating some little highlights in his, his legs. And then I'm just using only black and it's kind of a little diluted to just kind of soften up this area around him. Just to kind of work out some of that extra texture that might be a little too harsh. And just kind of soften that out. Still want some of it, but not all of it. It's still there, it's just layered. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way he looks right now. I don't want to overwork him. Okay, so now we want to kind of still add in some of these um, plants that kind of come over the top of them. However, with watercolor, 
Watercolor is very, very transparent. And so it's kind of hard to do that sometimes when you have black in the back. So you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can add it with um, like mix in some bleed proof white. You can use some acrylic paint. Gouache is great. Do I say that right? Gouache? I think that's how you say it. Um, gouache is great. Um, I'm going to implement using a white gel pen because that's what I have on hand. And um, I know that I can use this as a layer, let it dry, and then come back in and paint over the top of it. And it will kind of do the same effect. So um, I have to keep in mind that parts of this is wet. Um, so I think while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to use the same kind of effect and use my Micron pens. This is my favorite technique. It's called line and wash. And it's essentially where you just kind of come in and add some detail in pen. And so I'm going to essentially do kind of what we did with our paintbrush and just do lines and squiggles on those lines to emphasize some of these plants and weeds and things. And this is where I can add some detail around the cotton. So this is, I just allow this to be really, really squiggly and allow it to just be, it doesn't have to be fancy or fun. Well, it's always fun. It doesn't have to be fancy or complex, I guess is what I meant to say. It should be fun. That came out wrong. <laughs> always fun. And I like this technique because I don't have to get too caught up in my drawing skills. I just kind of scribble, scribble and kind of just follow some of the stuff that I've already done. This is where you can also add some layers to come over the top of the buffalo too because the pen will show up over the top of the buffalo. So you can add some plants over him this way. And if you use different depths of pens, like this one is an eight, this one's gonna be much thicker than my one, right? So, you know, tread lightly, but you can add some plants that kind of come out and they're a little bit darker and thicker. Again, it doesn't work if it's wet, so just be careful around the wet spots. Like I said, just kind of scribble scrabble. Doesn't have to be perfect. I actually really, really love this. Okay, so I'm going to use, the buffalo is pretty much dry. So I'm gonna use my thick eight, micron eight bra, or pen, and I'm just gonna kind of casually skim over this buffalo here. I just, I am very loosey-goosey with my, my edging here. I don't make a big deal or fuss out of it. I just kind of casually trace it. However, I am going to pay a little bit more attention around his face. We might come back in and add some more details in his nose. I didn't really do a lot there. And his eyes, I'm going to fill in his eyes really black. 
and then kind of around his eyes, like leave a little spot in there. Get up right next to these lines here. Okay, let's use our jelly pen that I was telling you about. <clears throat> and this is gonna kind of come, it's mainly gonna be for the areas around, like where we come over the buffalo. We'll just kind of work it in casually in other spots too, just so it's not so completely out of place. But this is how we can help identify some of these plants over the top of this. Now, um, I kind of want to add some more over here. So you just decide where you want them. Now, what we're going to do is use our watercolor to add some color on top of that, which I think I'm gonna use like a yellow ochre. And we're just gonna kind of place, see how it makes it pop more against the, the black? We just kind of place some of this yellow ochre in some of these plant spots. And you can just use a variety of colors, some of the colors we've already mixed up before, and just kind of place them over the top of Mr. Buffalo. And it kind of just makes it, so it pops out over the top of him. And it kind of just messes with the opacity levels a little bit in your watercolor to where there's a little bit more depth and you can kind of just play with these. So it simultaneously adds, adds some highlights and some lowlights, which I just love. Hey, you guys, I think he's done. Look at how cute he is. I'm gonna mix in some of these other colors underneath him. I'm gonna darken it up, but I'm gonna bring some life to it too. So there's more green and yellows and stuff. Okay, we can sit here and we can play all day. There's more things I can do. I, I know there is just by looking at things. Um, and even then, after saying that we're going to stop, I still am like, oh, yeah, but what about his nose? Oh, yeah, there's like all these little features, these little things I want to add. And I just I'll keep playing with it all day long. <laughs> so you just kind of have to know when it's time and just know, that, like, be happy with what you have. You can keep playing with it. But sometimes I find if we keep going when we need to stop, that's when we overwork things and we get frustrated. So I'm just going to sign it. A L R A twenty twenty. I hope you guys loved this so much. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that this buffalo is a beautiful symbol of gratitude for you. The buffalo is a symbol of gratitude, abundance, joy, wellness, and healthy relationships. The power within the buffalo spirit will help you achieve happiness and prosperity in this life. However, the buffalo spirit animal requires that you respect the earth and live a harmonious, meaningful life. In honor of the buffalo, remember to live in gratitude and be grateful for the talents and gifts you've been blessed with. Ask for help when you need it. As you do so, your life will be touched with peace. Mm -hmm.